everyone, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi everybody, thank you for being with us here uh, this June 7th. This is our 156th Tipsy Tuesday. Can you believe it? Thanks for being here. Of course, say hi to Mr. HP. He's uh, running the controls tonight. And we welcome you all, whether you are watching us on YouTube or Facebook or, uh, yeah, or looking over somebody's shoulders. Hi, husbands. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet or like our page on Facebook. We are here every Tuesday and Friday, of course. Now, we love it if you comment 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 throughout the show and to encourage you we have a giveaway at the end and it's a random commenter that wins a 25 dollars gift card plus a second one is up for grabs with a giveaway question that we give everybody opportunity to uh, enter and that you just do that by answering the question whether you're watching live or not now today's show is going to be special i have a great topic for you it's i'm going to talk about scrappy backgrounds so in particular, how to spice up your quilts using those fabulous low volume fabrics. And of course, we have some new fabrics to show you in the store. Now, we had a great weekend, uh, a busy one. I think we pretty much dozed or dazed through Sunday and then slept half of yesterday. Busy, busy. Are you caught up on your sleep, honey? Um, a little bit, I Okay. Guess. Well, before we talk about the weekend, let's announce last week's winner from our question giveaway question. I asked you, what are your favorite pizza toppings? That was an interesting question. Your answers were just very, <laughs> I should say interesting. Some very classic, others very interesting. What was Love interesting? that. What was interesting? The, just the combinations, you know? Some yeah. people wanted uh, pepperoni and anchovies. Or sausage and, well, sausage and olives is pretty classic, but um, a lot of people like the arugula on a pizza, dude. So don't, oh, don't yuck my yum. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. But our winner is Miss Irene Duffy. And her answer was Hawaii with white sauce instead of red sauce. Now that's interesting. That, I... Can imagine being good. So why is like, isn't that uh, ham and pineapple? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with with white garlic sauce, that sounds like that would be good. That'd be tasty. If I ate ham. <laughs> but you know, I used to back in the day. So uh, congratulations, Irene, to claim your gift card. Just send us an email to help at geequiltdesigns.com and we will get it right to you. Now, yes, that was a busy weekend here in uh, this household. Of course, uh, Mr. HP has been kind of flying by the seat of your pants all last week, rehearsing and preparing for this great production, the print celebration at Paisley Park. He had um, this big show Saturday night and a lot of other things going on Friday, Thursday. So, yes, we partied with the best of them. <laughs> We tried. We, we tried. tried. We accomplished it. Anyway. We had some friends come to visit uh, in town for this, of course. So we got some minutes and time to spend with them, some quality time. But it was it was a beautiful weekend, and of course, his show was a smash hit, wasn't it? It was good. That's what the people say. Yeah. So they're all hoping <laughs> that they take it on the road. But you know what? Um, who knows? We'll see what happens with that. But of course, today is June 7th, and that was um, the birthday day of Mr. P. And so today they had you went downtown for a little went for downtown, a little uh, ceremony. And officially made Prince Rogers Way. Uh, they changed the street name to his name right on First Avenue between Seventh yeah. and Eighth Street, where f the club First Avenue is. So. So Prince Avenue Way. Prince Rogers Nelson First Avenue, of course, Way. the club famous for um, the Purple Rain movie was filmed there. And yep. you got discovered there and everything else. So that was that was classic. And, of course, it's right, it's right down from where the mural. So it's really the new mural between the new mural and the corner of First Avenue. First Avenue. Yeah, yeah, the club. The club. 
I think that's very appropriate. And the governor actually named today officially in Minnesota is Prince Day, June 7th. So that's beautiful. And beautiful. we decided that we're supposed to be at the Twins game. Oh, yeah. Because it's Prince themed. Yeah. It's a Prince Day at the Twins game, the baseball game downtown. And we were supposed to be there, but we decided. We'd rather be here with you. Yes. You were more important. So <laughs> we're not big baseball fans. So we decided Tipsy Tuesday was going to win. Yes. So are you all proud of us about that? Because I got some cool things to show you today. So let's start with the quilts behind me. I've kind of chosen them purposefully because uh, of our topic of tonight. So behind me, right on the wall, is my Spin Cycle quilt. This is from the book Scrap School, which is, is a compilation book that I was a part of. came out last year, early last year, I believe. It's been over a year. Um, so this one, it was all about scrappiness. Of course, a very scrappy background. So we have some bigger photos to show you um, the whole thing. Do you have some photos? And you can show them. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So it's a really fun quilt. I wanted it, of course, extra scrappy. But so lots of low volume fabrics. As you can see more in this shot. Various stuff. Lots of Tim Holtz because that's what I wanted to use this for. But all kinds of other stuff mixed in, which is my favorite. And then, um, oh, show them the book it comes in, maybe. Uh, yeah, Scrap School. So co compiled by Lisa Alexander. So a bunch of, bunch of quilt from a bunch of designers. So that was a great book. It is a great book. And we have it in stock. Um, then in the corner, I have a brand new quilt top. It's not even quilted yet because I wanted to showcase uh, a, f a brand new quilt that uses some of our low volume bundles just to show you how they work. So this is the Helena quilt made out of the workshop uh, are the colored pieces. And then the um, background pieces are made from the modern backgrounds in the fog color. So I'll show you that a little bit later. But I, l I made it extra scrappy, so I mixed up the color within each block. And we'll talk about that later too. But I really love how this is turning out. Then we have on the little cabinet, we have a brand new runner. This is Little Roxy, made with a charm pack, a brand new charm pack that just came in, merry making, but the background is scrappy, so I'll show it to you up close. You can see a little up close there. So scrappy backgrounds, and um, you can see, do you have a photo of the whole thing? To, yeah, so we just got these in. There it is on the wall, uh, the whole thing. And that, that runner, of course, is really easy to make with the mini ruler and super fun very very fun of course and it's a little pattern so single pattern all right so i think we should just dive right into the topic don't you think it's lots to talk about i know dive you're gonna reading. have a lot of questions i know you're gonna have a lot of questions so um yeah i decided to wear my tie-dye uh sweatshirt today because it was a very low volume set so let me be high volume for you. <laughs> Very loud. So I'll, um, let's talk about scrappy backgrounds. So I love doing scrappy backgrounds. Um, and I'm going to talk about those. And in particular, I'm going to focus a little bit on multiple low volume prints versus just using one fabric for your background. So as you probably know, I love having scrappy elements in my quilts. And um, I do scrappy backgrounds quite often because it's just sometimes more variety and more fun and more movement than just using one. But to be successful, um, there are quite a few things to consider. And that's also, you know, according to your taste level, maybe you just want to dip your toes into it. And then others, you say the scrappier, the better. But I'm going to give you some tips on um, things. if depending on what you're looking for, there are some things to consider. So first, the first key ingredient, what we want to do by choosing multiple fabrics for one background. And so what I'm talking about, I'm talking about your background, your, your piece of the quilt that's going to fall back and 
make the other elements stand out, the bright colors of a star block or anything like that. So I'm not talking about the backing, I'm talking about the background, the lightest part in the quilt. Sometimes it can be the darkest if you're using a dark background. But it, I'm just talking about scrappy backgrounds and we're mostly gonna focus on light fabrics, but all of that can be transferred and used for dark fabrics or gray fabrics or whatever, okay? So the key is we wanna add interest to the background uh, without detracting or distracting from the main design of the quilt, if that makes sense. We're just adding some, what would that be in music? If you're just adding a little extra, a little harmony on it, a little something. It's a little tree bells and trinkets and percussion. Uh, a little percussion, yes. Yes. Adding a little percussion to the song. So that's, that's a great way to describe it. So um, here are some of the key things to consider when we're talking about uh, choosing our scrappy background fabrics or low volume fabrics. So number one, value is key. This word value is key when choosing which fabrics to use and put to put together as well as how much background, background space there is in the quilt. How much background fabric is needed? Is the space really big? Um, so let me talk about value. What is value? Um, so value is the darkness of a single color. So you can get a yellow from really light or to really dark yellow. So that's the value of that one color. So um, if we're talking about light fabrics, it can be from white, white, pure white into the darker taupes and then of course through the grays and all the way, um, all the way there. So we're, that's what we're talking about value is the scale within a color. So you can, you can choose uh, how much impact you want your scrappiness to be based on the variation in value of the fabrics. <clears throat> so uh, value can, can, for example, you can determine value. This is how you determine value of a color or fabrics. You take a picture of them and then you turn it to black and white because then you just see the value of the colors. Some are going to be really strong. That's the darker values. And then some are going to fall back. And you'll notice that some that to the eye, they don't look the same, that they're going to look the same when you turn them to black and white. So that's what we're talking about value. So let me give you an example just by putting these fabrics down. If I was um, to pick some fabrics for a scrappy background, so let's look at this here. Um, I have some kind of creamy on the creamy side fabric, so which I would probably put together in a low volume quilt or as a scrappy background. You know, they're all kind of on the same same value scale. This one is a little bit creamier, but then I bring in something like this. And you can see that that's darker. And if I were to take a photo of this and turn this to black and white, this is one that's gonna be dark, show up darker in the black and white photo. This one is probably gonna, if I'm choosing all of these in the same scale, one of these is gonna really stand out. Now I can add a few more and then it's gonna mix better, but we maybe wanna avoid to have just one that's really gonna be a higher value. We wanna try, if you want a calmer quilt, you wanna try and have everybody in a similar value. Now, that doesn't mean that has to always happen. We can have a variety in value just as long as they're balanced. Like I'm saying, if I had one in here, that's not gonna be balanced. You're gonna, they're gonna stick out and you're gonna be able to spot them everywhere in the quilt. If you have more of them and they mix, it's better. But then your, your, your background is gonna have more motion, gonna have more action. The more value difference that you have in, that, in those fabrics. So let's um, show, let me show you some examples. So let's start with my Lexi quilt. So here's the cover on my Lexi. You look at this quilt from afar, just like it is on the pattern cover. It looks like I'm using a single background fabric because I, even though they are scrappy, it is scrappy, but they are all the exact same value. And so that really, you know, that, cause that's what I wanted. I felt like they needed to be the same value for, to create the illusion that the pattern does, but I wanted to have the variety in the fabric. So I thought it would be too boring if it was the same fabric. So let me show you just on the overhead, the differences. 
in the fabrics. So you'll see that there is different prints, but they're all kind of the same value, very thin lines. So from afar, it's going to read the same. So another example is my um, Helena quilt. So we'll look at the pattern cover of Helena. This quilt, this exact quilt has a little more variety in the values. You can see it because some of the blocks are going to, the, the white parts in some of the blocks, you see they're a little shaded, a little bit more shaded. So there's a little bit more variety and it kind of happened mainly because of this print here. This print here, the typography print, because it had a little more color than the others, even though the background color is the exact same, it reads different. It reads a little bit shaded. So there's a little more value and so did this one, the grid with the red and red is always a, a high value color it always stands up as a high value. So even these little lines make this so much darker than this fabric, even though it's the same print, just with a different color. So there's a little slight difference there. And then um, I have another Helena quilt that uh, was actually my prototype that I did. And when I do prototypes, I love just to grab stuff from my bins. So I have bins of, bins of 10 inch squares that I just grab to play with a pattern. And in this one, I just grabbed my black and red fabrics along with a whole bunch of different lights for, to, to use scrappy. And so this one has a lot more variety in the lights, as you can see. So there's a lot, and so there's a lot more action going on. Um, just some of them will have a lot of print on the light colors. Others have a more creamy tone to them or uh, others have a little topiness to them. And so that's what gives those that difference. And I absolutely love it in this quilt because it literally just came from my stash. And so sometimes those are the best. But you can see this is a darker fabric and then there's a, a little bit more dense of a print and that creates that variation in the value. If that, um, if that, if you get what I'm saying there. All right. so. Any questions on the value or should we just continue and have questions in the end? I think we should continue and have questions in the end. Was there, is that Kobe in the window? That was Kobe in the window and that was a total accident. He was standing behind me and all of a sudden I saw the photo and there he was. He's not in the window, he's, <laughs> he's a reflection. But it was pretty cool how that happened. All right, so the next thing to consider um, with your low volume prints. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about with low volume prints, so usually low volume prints are referred to as being light colored and they have a little print on them. It could be tone on tone print or it could be colored print, but just a little bit of print, but they're still not dark enough or dense enough to become a different color. So let me show you an example of some low volume prints I have here. So here are some low volume prints. These are all all um, different, you know, some are creamy, some have more white, but they have a different, uh, they have, these are pretty much similar scale, but you can get anything from, this is also low volume, variation in scale, variation in texture. Here's another one that is um, uh, larger scale, smaller scale. So these are all low volume prints. So uh, we're going to talk about, no, actually we're talking about volume. So we're talking about low volume, um, but even volume. Value. We just talked about, uh, we talked about contrast. Oh, I miss contrast. Sorry. I'm just t skipping over things. Let's talk about, uh, thank you, honey, for keeping me on track. We're talking about contrast. So what you want, really want for your fabrics that you're picking as your background is to have contrast um, with the other colors, with the other fabrics that are going to create the pattern. So with the fabrics chosen for your backgrounds, they have to have contrast with the other colors. So what I'm talking about there is um, so that you can really de define where the pattern, pattern is in the quilt pattern. 
So contrast is different from, from value. Contrast can be created by putting two colors together. That creates contrast. Red and blue is going to create contrast. Also, light and dark is going to create contrast. So you can create contrast two different ways. So it's not the same as value because you can create contrast with two different colors of the same value, but they still create contrast. Do you know what I mean? So what we have to be careful with when we're choosing a bunch of different fabrics in this, um, you don't want to have too much color in your backgrounds that it's going to mess with the dark fabrics that so, so you don't see the pattern anymore. So I'm going to give you some, some examples of that. So I have this runner here. Um, this is my uh, little Stella runner. We can show you the, okay, we'll show you the overhead first, but so little Stella. So I had a bunch of lights and then a bunch of darks. Um, this was just a charm pack. So I had to kind of divide my uh, charms into lights and darks. And so I obviously took the darkest navies and the real blue ones and put them in the dark pile. And then I had the lights and some of them were kind of in between because like this print is a very, very small print. It has a light background, but because of the um, scale, it reads like it's light blue. So what you can do with that to, to still create enough contrast, what I tried to do is I always paired my darkest blue with my dark, so my darkest dark with my darkest light. And then I still have that contrast, but this, with this would not have created that contrast. But I created the contrast so you can still see each and every star, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, but still that you get that variation and that movement from the scrappiness. So we have to always be conscious of, uh, are we getting enough contrast? Even though we're going super scrappy, we wanna have enough contrast so you don't lose the actual pattern, all right? Okay, moving on to volume, volume, volume. So speaking of volume, we have our low volumes. These are called low volumes, but the low volumes have different volumes. <laughs> yes, they do. So we have our fabrics that, uh, the, our low volume fabrics that can be very loud. They have a lot going on. They're still low volume, but they have a lot going on. And then we have those um, that are called kind of in the middle, that those are the, you know, the inside voices. And then we have um, the real soft, the quiet, well, the whispering ones, the really, really soft. Um, they still have some motion, but really soft. So you can use them all together, all the different volumes of the low volumes. You can mix them all together. The more loudness, the busier your quilt is gonna be. But if you mix them all and make sure you have contrast, you're, you're okay. But you might not want to mix something that's really whispering, really soft with something that's really loud because again, just like we talked about with value, that's going to scream at you, those loud ones are going to scream at you if they're just kind of dispersed around the quilt. So let me give you an example. So I, I threw out these earlier, all these low volumes, and these are kind of all, I would say medium, medium volume. Um, so inside voices, all of these, what I would call uh, whispering would be some of these that are just tone on tone, just a really nice soft, these are kind of whispering. Now what am I talking about with loud? Something that's loud is going to be something like this. That's pretty loud. Um, something like this. That's loud. Um, something like this. So there's a lot going on versus these. So I would say whisper, inside voice, loud. Still not yelling, still pretty, still could be used, but, but in its own way and carefully. So let me give you an example. Here I have a quilt that I made uh, strip, strip joints. That was one of our uh, strip alongs last year. This quilt is, um, I used both soft and medium and loud in my lights, but I made sure that 
all of my darks uh, creating enough contrast with those louds so they can still really easily see the blocks. So another thing to look at that your darks, make sure your darks don't have a whole bunch of light in them because if you can imagine if these prints would have some light in them, you wouldn't get the contrast. So that is key. This was a successful where I could be loud and soft all in the, um, and whispering all in one quilt. <clears throat> so um, the fourth, last thing to consider when we're choosing our background fabrics, our low volumes, is the scale of the print. And that's not kind of something that I, it is really, really closely related to the volume. Um, but the scale of the actual pattern matters, and especially matters, you have to kind of consider that depending on the size of the pieces you're cutting for your quilt. Are you doing a quilt with one and a half inch strips? Or are you doing a quilt with like five inch big or 10 inch big pieces? So that really matters. And um, so you don't want to have something a lot of large scale and then just one that's really small scale because that one's going to stand out and vice versa. You want to mix the scales, but make sure it fits with whatever sizes you're going to be working with. Because if it's really large scale and you start cutting it into small pieces, you might end up with a one and a half inch square that's, you know, blue because the flower on it, on that light background was so big that all you get is blue. So then all you're going to see when you look at that quilt is that blue square where you're supposed to have background. So that's something um, you always have to consider. And I'm going to give you a really great example of that. And this uh, pertains to both, like kind of those three things that I talked about in the end. Um, uh, three, the contrast, the uh, volume, and the scale. So uh, one thing that I want you to show us, see, show us an example. So, and this is about the density, the scale, the density of the, of the print. Uh, here we have a light background with a green print on it. This could be read as a low volume. Yes, it is tight. So uh, one thing to consider when you have this, even though up close you can see all the light fabrics and it looks really light. Um, when you step away from that, this might just read as light green because the further you go away, the, the less you see the white. And then if you think you have, you're gonna you know, match this with something that's a more solid color, you have gotta make sure you don't do that with something that has a solid color with white in it because even though separately they look very different, look like they would have contrast, once you put them together and let alone intermixed in a block or something, they're gonna read the exact same. So that's something to really consider about um, the scale of your pattern, how tight the pattern is, if, uh, if you have your dark prints or your contrast print have a lot of the white in them, they might not create as much of a contrast when we're doing scrappy, scrappy backgrounds. So I'm going to show you a perfect example and it's just a quilt top because it never got quilted because it just didn't work. So I did this uh, strip joints with one and a half inch strips. So you can really barely see the strip joints because my low volumes, first off, they were really busy um, and mo mostly because the scale. So this polka dot was just too big because once it was cut down to one inch, it was just kind of half of the strip. And then also because in the dark fabrics, the polka dots had white in them. So they started reading white. They, you know, sometimes you just saw this as white. Um, so they kind of muddled the contrast. So I had to redo this print, even though I love the colors. And, and you know what? Some people love this, this type of scrappiness. When there's a little bit less contrast, you can barely see the print or barely see the pattern, but you can. So some people love that. But I made a second version where I took, I still use really busy, um, prints, but then I decided to use solids for my, my darks. So it wouldn't muddle that, you know, with a big white piece anywhere. 
so much more uh, successful, I would say. And I love, I love this one. I just recently found this, this one, and, and I figured, you know, it's a great teaching point to show you. Um, because once you step away from this one, you can barely see the pattern. All right, so uh, that is that is all the four things you need to consider when you're picking your scrappy backgrounds. And I wanted to show you, uh, talk about these examples behind me, because for example, the, the spin cycle quilt has a really large scale prints. It has a lot of variety in the value because there's a lot of background space, a lot of background space. So I wanted to have a lot of variety. I wanted to have a lot going on because the darks, the dark navies with just the squares, they are creating such a subtle pattern that I wanted more interest. If this was just one solid single background, it would be a very boring quilt, <laughs> in my opinion, I should say. So I wanted to have the variety. Some would say this is too much variety for their taste, and that's okay. That's where you can still be scrappy and create something that still works for you, whether you like it you know, more variety that's gonna be busier or less variety, more uh, same value, same scale, it's gonna be better on you and, you know, kind of calmer in all kinds of ways. Uh, then I wanted to talk about, so let's talk about the one in the corner, the Helena. Um, can we do bring that one up, up close again? So I used um, just a, one bundle for my colors and they were all pretty much tone on tone. Um, so I'm talking about the one from the workshop, the, the two photos of the one in the corner. Yeah. Can you put that one up? So then for my scrappy backgrounds, I chose them all from the same bundle. So they were all on the same color, color way and on the same value. Very similar prints, all gray prints. Some were tighter, others were looser, but they still gave me a lot of variety without um, that color variation. So I, lo I love that and that's a, another easy way. And of course, because I, I knew I wanted to mix up the colors to make it scrappier, then staying on the same color spectrum as far as my background fabric really, really helped. All right, um, so let's look at my runner. I'm gonna just grab it from here and show you again because this was a charm pack and um, I used this merrymaking charm pack, which we just got in. It has a lot of lights in them, but not quite enough for all of these. So I just grabbed, uh, we have one of them in one yards, the eggnog color. And so I just cut a bunch of these uh, to make up for, so I could have equal amounts of lights and darks. And so you can see the variety and this, you know how it, there is just that movement by having that variety but of course there's a lot of the same so it just um, kind of balances it out too so um, let's take some questions on everything I've been talking about I've been talking about a lot and it's a lot I'd love to hear if you like experimenting with scrappy backgrounds if it's something you want to try and uh, or absolutely not you like very organized non-scrappy things is value same as volume not really because volume then we're talking about the actual print on the fabric so the actual patterns like um, the circles on this one let's look at in the overhead so volume we're talking about um, the circle so this one has um, spacing so it would say I would say medium loud versus um where's my other loud one so and then this one would be very soft volume because it's really uh, one tone this one has a little bit of color and then we have something that's loud because it has a lot of pattern a lot more color so value is more what we're talking about um from a lighter to a more yellow that's on a scale where the value goes from light to dark. All right, good question, great question. All right, 
Questions? May more questions? The Helena quilt DS is a separate pattern. And we have it both as the regular Helena pattern and then also as the little Helena for little ones. Is there a way to save blocks to keep referring back to? You know, our blocks don't delete. Uh, and if you use the search bar on our website, it searches the blogs too. So if you're looking for a topic, you can use that search word and bring up that blog post. So it does not just search for products, which is beautiful. All right. Um, will the, I have this one. Do you, can you put it up from uh, YouTube from Karen? Will the value or the volume look different in a black and white picture? Yes, because the volume of a print, if they're, if they're dense and if they're really loud, it's going to show darker than something that doesn't have a print, much of a print on it. So yes, it's going to show a darker, it's going to show difference in, in value, but it, it means different things. I know it's similar, but it means different things. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's just something you still have to consider because you don't see it with the eye. You don't see it with the eye, but once you have your quilt together, it's gonna you it's gonna show in the final final product. All right. What is the quilting pattern used on Little Roxy? Oh, I have that written down. It is, and I can show you. Um, it is called Christmas 2012. Yeah, Christmas 2012. It's Urban Elements. Um, somebody asked to see the back of it. So I'll show you the back. We used, um, so I actually, we, used, we were able to use the charm pack and then just one yard for the border, binding, and back. Just piece a little bit in the middle. So it's like Christmas trees, ornaments, loop-de-loops, and stars. It's really cute. Christmas 2012. All right, more questions? No? Okay, great. Well, um, somebody said, bless you, did you, you sneeze, when you sneezed <laughs> earlier. Thank you. All right, so let's, um, let's move into some of the fabrics I got. I know this was uh, a lot. I wanted to um, just talk through that. I'm, I'm gonna show, show you some of our bundles of low volume fabrics. If it's something that you haven't tried, I encourage you to try it. Um, and I have something special for you, but let's talk about our fabrics that we have new. I have a brand new winter bundle. I would say not necessarily Christmas, it's a winter bundle. It's called Snow Much Fun. And it's kind of a, a, a part two it's a Dear Stella line, a part two of Baby It's Cold Outside, which we had last year, which was so cute. So they took kind of the same, similar main print, recolored it a little bit. So it has these beautiful indigo depth, deep blue tones, sage greens, and these really beautiful corally pinks, um, and like kind of the frosty light blue too. I really love that. Love this snowflake print. And then we have snowmen. So cute. And they have curry colored uh, sticks for arms. And they, some of them have hats, some of them have earmuffs. I threw in a little moonscape there to balance out the bundle. And then we have candy canes on the dark navy and the string of Christmas lights. So I balance, it's a 12 piece bundle. I kind of balance it by doing six navy, darker navy based fabrics. And then we have the light fabric. So it's kind of a light and dark bundle. Beautiful, beautiful plaid. And then this one's one of my favorites. We have the sweaters, Christmas sweaters. Really cute ones. I would not call these ugly sweaters. These are really cute winter sweaters. Then we have kind of like a directional print with rows of cars with the trees, Christmas trees on them. This is a perfect low volume. 
And here we have um, this pond scene. Everybody's skating. Really cute. Kind of this icy blue background texture. And then a little bit more, a louder, a little bit louder, low volume print. I love the berries with the icy blue branches. And then finally, a little bit of that gray greenery, the sage green, red berries. So you can see here's a, a perfect example of a uh, difference in, in volume. These are quieter than these. And This one's even qu more quiet than this one. Does that make sense? You see the difference? Okay. Oh, I would do something where you can do lights and darks. Um, something. I asked, what, I asked what pattern. For I this. know. So there's patterns. If you, go, if you watch the Matchmaker series. I repeated it because my mic wasn't on. Oh, you did. Okay. And you just Sorry. started answering, and they don't know why you're. Oh, answering. got it. What okay. he said? What pattern? Like. You know, something that you would mix it up. Um, but let me do the fabric pull for you first. So we have two of the prints in one yard. So we have the plaid, of course. I love adding plaid. Um, and then we have the moonscape. I would love to, like, this would be a great Wanda. Um, it would be great Sammy, Kira, fun stuff like that. So then I pulled, I actually did my pull. I didn't want to pull just uh, just navies and lights. I did kind of all the other colors we have going on. If you wanted to mix in some, so um, basic bumblebears, basic indigo, a great navy to go with it. Then um, I did dash flow in the allure, kind of that medium blue. You can see it everywhere uh, in the sweaters, in the Christmas slides, in the print. And then a lightest icy blue, I did the chalk and charcoal in the breeze for uh, the light blue. I wanted to pull out some of the red. So this corally red that is sprinkled throughout either with the moonscape poppy or the nature elements in the hibiscus. So not too bright of a red, it's pretty subtle, but beautiful tone of red. So then I had two other colors that are in here that could be used as accents too, as focus. So you could use this all in a pattern like Amelie and then throw in that color, either the red, or you could do a green as the focus. You could do a Clarissa. Um, or if you wanted to do something unexpected and add a yellow, it's a pretty light, bright yellow. I love the starlit sunshine for that because it kind of is a great match with those yellows in the lights. Now if you wanted to uh, add some lights that are a lot quieter than these, I would recommend the Lyricist and the Diary uh, white or the Dots white. So they are pretty white because you want to, um, this, I kind of went with this color, pretty white but not quite white on white. So there it is. And this is Snow Much Fun. Dear Stella, 12 piece bundle. Yay. Yay. Yeah, like I said, it would be really cool in many other, in many patterns and bringing in any of these focus colors would be just make it pop. All right, so I wanted to show you the second one. This was winter. We're going straight from winter to summer. <laughs> this next one is ocean themed. So let me move this out of the way. And it is called Oceanside, right? No. Dreams. Ocean Dreams. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just making up stuff at this point. <laughs> ocean Dreams. And it's really also lots of low volumes. I kind of chose these to show you tonight. So we'll start with the lobsters. Really cute lobsters. So this one uh, is, this whole bundle is kind of fairly monochromatic. All kind of in the blues into the really light blues um, and light fabrics, but they're gonna read very light blue because of all the blueprint that's on them. So, 
we're going from the lobsters to oh what are these called again somebody's gonna yell it out because it's sand something right um yes so a little bit of that taupe in there then we have beautiful shells i just love this artwork um, this artist's name is Tom Little. Sandpipers. Sandpipers. I knew it was sand something. And we have turtles. Oh, turtles and fish. And we got lobsters. We got to have crabs. All the different kinds of crabs. And of course, some starfish. So as you can see, I, I kind of went from the lowest value and the value is going darker as you know we go on have some more shells with a little more of that taupe in there we have more birds on this light blue background we have some sailboats bringing a little more of that kind of a rusty reddish taupe and we have some sharks sharks among the fish they're all smiling kind of <laughs> and then um of course some whales so as you can see the blues are getting a little bit darker and the last print is really gorgeous in here and that is this stripe so with that those deepest blues in here that'd be really cool so this is Ocean Dreams, and let me show you. So what I did for a fabric pull, I went from dark blue and into the lighter blues just to create the same ombre effect. So I wanted to start with the diamond dots in the blue because it has some of the light and the dark in there. And then we go into canvas cobalt, a little bit some of the brighter blue, blue tones. Thatched cornflower, and then into some of the lighter seeds in the sky for a light blue, and then chalk and charcoal in the lake has more and more white in it, and then a really light blue whimsy in the spa blue. So, if you were uh, part of Color Club for January, those colors in that color club would work really well in here. And then I ended it with just some of the white, going into the white, the canvas whitewash, or the diamond dots white on white. Um, so I did add, there's a beautiful, beautiful stripe that would work perfectly, the diagonal stripe in the blue, that would work perfectly with this bundle. But because it has some of those sandy colors, if you wanted to add some of those colors, I, I pulled three options for you just because, you know, that's me, gotta have options. More is always better. So I did the uh, spectrostatic prism, prism. It's kind of got the more yellowish hue to it. A more sandy hue would be the dash flow in the wheat. And then a more brown would be the bumbleberries in the biscotti with a variation into the little bit darker. So. It would work well with, you know, the shells and, of course, the sandpipers. Um, then we have one color peeking through all of these as well. If you wanted to add a focus color, um, if you wanted to do something that would just need one focus, this Bumbleberries Dark Terracotta is kind of sprinkled throughout because it's in the claws of the lobsters and it's in the crabs, it's in the sailboats, even in the sharks. So that would be great to add as an accent to or a focus to really bring it, uh, bring the pattern out. So Ocean Dreams, this is it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I hope your brain is not exploding from all of the low volume information. I wanna show you, uh, we have the merrymaking uh, charm packs in, the one I made the little Roxy, let me move this out of the way and show you. 
Um, so those look like this with all the colors. And then we have that, those basic mirror making prints, the tone on tones with the little silver metallic in them in these colors. So you could really choose whatever color you want it for a border. You know, it wouldn't have to be red. You could do the navy. I love the vintage blue, green. They would all look great in there. So then we have a, this one just came in. If you're not thinking Christmas yet, I understand that. Not really ready for that yet. Uh, this one just came in, really cute charm squares. Uh, this is called Sweetness, and it has watermelon kind of theme. So we have melons and really bright colors. So this will be super sweet to put together a little table runner with. I love this print. It's kind of like the water inside of the watermelon texture. Uh, sweetness. So fun little, fun little charm pack to make something fun for summer, a little table topper. And then I thought I would show you some of the low volume bundles that we have. If you wanted to try your, um, try a little bit of low volume. Oh, they're all over here. Just gonna bend down. So we're gonna start with this one, even though it's low volume and it has black and white. Remember, you could do scrappy backgrounds with a dark background. This is Duality Fusion from Art Gallery. We have it, um, it has six prints in the whites and they're all on the same tone, all on the same level, and that it has six blacks. Same print, just in the black. So that would be one. Uh, then we have Hush Hush. This has just a slight variety, of variety in the tone, so more off-white into more creamy, little bit of grayish hues, but all little low volume prints called Hush Hush. We have uh, another one. Uh, let me see. Oh, this one. That's the one I want to show you. So also called Lower the Volume. These are very subtle, very quiet. I would say all these are all inside voices. <laughs> very nice inside voices. Lower the volume. Then we have two in-house bundles that we've had in stock and we have them regularly in stock. It's a white on white bundle, all different white on whites. And then we have a light bundle which has a variety of prints. They're always good price and they have some creamier ones and some whiter ones. Sometimes um, the, the fabrics in them will vary a little bit from the photos because it's something we keep, keep rolling all the time. So then we have uh, the modern backgrounds are great. So these are Moda. Uh, the modern backgrounds come in four different colorways. So there's eggshell, which is more creamy, but they are going to be six different ones and they're all going to be on the same level as far as value. Um, some a little bit louder than others, but, but mostly on the same level. We have the fog. That's the one I used for my Helena, and it's a little bit of a gray or topier background color. And then we have what they call just the white. So it's a cleaner, whiter, brighter, but same prints, same six prints. And then we have a steel one, so grays. A little bit lighter gray and a little bit darker, so you can mix those together for a scrappy background. We have this one is more taupe. This is first light taupe. So very taupey from, this is from um, Ruby Star. Has Some of them have a little gold in them. Beautiful taupe colors. And then the Sister Bay has three that are, are more creamy and three that are more taupey. So a little bit more, You, I would still put them together. You would just get a little more loudness in your quilt, a little more variety, a lot more movement. And then if you wanted something that has color too, this one, Beguiled Light, is all white prints with different amounts of color. So you'll see here's a perfect example how some are um, higher volume, louder than others, even though they're all starting on the same point. It's just a matter of how big the prints are, how dense they are. So uh, one other one that I wanted to show you 
And that's our bundle of low volume lollies. So these are prints that are printed so they have multiple prints in each one. So it's a half yard, but you get this strip of different prints in each one. So this is a great way to get multiple prints in just one bundle. So we have the lightest and then it kind of goes into um, a little bit darker, into more blacks um, and grays, different hues. So that low volume lollies. And I wanted to tell you, just for you, just for our show, all of these low volume bundles are going to be 20% off until through Sunday. So through Sunday, 20% off. We already lowered the prices. The prices are um, already lowered on the website already. So snatch them up. I know they are going to be popular. So uh, until, until we're out. <laughs> really, uh, is that's the discount that's going to stand. So any questions on any of the stuff that I've talked about? Did I forget anything? Did I forget anything, Mr. HP? No, I think you got it. I think we got it. Um, do you see any questions on your end? All right. Well, before you go shopping, I just wanted to, let's finish it up with a giveaway question because, um, and a live winner, live winner. Mm -hmm. Who's our live winner? I hope you've been commenting good all throughout the show. I'm sweating because I've been talking a lot. Whew, and I have a sweatshirt on, not the best idea <laughs> in the lights. But who's our live winner? Why are you laughing? Because you're funny. Patricia Geishert. I, heard, I hope I pronounced it correctly, Patricia. Congratulations, $25 gift card is yours. All you got to do is send an email to help at geequaltosigns.com and we will get you that gift card right away. Congrats, congrats. And we are going to finish with a giveaway question, so your second chance to win here. You just got to an answer this question. Yeah, we always got food on our minds. My question tonight is, what are your favorite yogurt flavors? And you can say that you don't eat yogurt. There's very few people that don't eat yogurt. We love yogurt. I, I, we do non-dairy yogurt. Uh, our favorite is So Delicious. Yours is So Delicious. Yep, I like strawberry, I like orange, I like blueberry. You don't have a favorite? I don't have a favorite. I'm, I'm a berry person, so it'd be raspberry or mixed berry, strawberry, strawberry banana sometimes. Um, I do love those. Siggy's has, you know, it's the Icelandic type of yogurt. They have a plant-based version that is delicious. It's very good, high protein, low fat. Delicious. And I think I like the mixed berry one best. That's what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> uh, that's why this question, I decided to have this question. All right, so just tell us your answer in the comments and you will be automatically entered for a giveaway, which we will announce during our next Tipsy Tuesday show next week, which is June 14th already. Yikes, we're halfway through the June. That's wild. 7 p.m. Central, June 14th. Um, and then, of course, I'll be live this coming Friday on June 10th at 3 p.m. Hope I will see you there. I hope your uh, brain is not exploding from all the information. But I'm excited to see you in a week. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.